Okay, so my name is Nick Fox. I'm a neurologist. I'm based at the Institute of Neurology in Queen Square, which is part of UCL. And my particular interest is uh, very uh, clinical research into uh, dementia or all its forms. And uh, our research has been focused on using imaging uh, to improve diagnosis and also to track progression to try and find uh, ways of identifying treatments that really will work to slow these diseases. The sim symptoms can overlap between different dementias. Uh, Alzheimer's disease most commonly starts with a problem of, of memory, so forgetfulness. And we all have some level of forgetfulness uh, in our normal daily life, but that is, uh, in Alzheimer's disease, the earliest features are a progression so that people who have more trouble remembering uh, things that they've been told, becoming more repetitive in questioning, not being quite sure of what day it is or what's happened recently. So the salient feature in Alzheimer's disease is problem with memory, which is progressive and may start very, very subtly. Other dementias, however, have quite, can have quite different features. Um, they may overlap. So some of the frontotemporal dementias have problems with behavior or problems with language. Um, vascular dementias may have a problem with people just becoming uh, much more slower cognitively. And so each dementia, uh, while having quite a broad range, has different features that may help to separate them out at a clinical level. At the moment, in, the, in this country, there are uh, four licensed treatments for uh, Alzheimer's disease. Three are really in the same family, and they are what are called cholinesterase inhibitors. And what they do is they try and make certain brain cells work a bit harder by supporting the neurotransmitter that those brain cells use. A fourth drug called memantine, uh, is, has a slightly different uh, form of action. All of these are thought to be symptomatic. And by that I mean they don't actually slow the underlying progression of disease within the brain, the underlying destruction of brain cells that produces the symptoms within the, each individual. They make those brain cells work a little bit harder, but they're not a cure. Uh, while while the benefits of these drugs have been proven, they're only mon modest. Uh, none of them are a mir miracle cure. They, none of them will actually halt the progressive destruction of brain cells, which produce the symptoms in each individual. Uh, their level of um, benefit may vary from individual to individual. So some people benefit quite a lot. Others may not even get any benefit at all. And they have a period, which we're not quite sure, which may be months to years, of producing some symptomatic benefit. So people function a bit better. They're not cures. I feel that um, this change in recognising that a, a diagnosis is important has benefits in a whole range of areas. Research, as well as clinically. Clinically, it's really important that people can access, support, can be involved in decisions about their future if they want to be at a stage when they're still able to make uh, those decisions um, with greatest competence. From a research point of view, the only way we're going to find treatments is if we have a good idea of what actually is the problem with an individual. Referring to dementia is like talking about brain failure. We wouldn't dream of trying to do research into cancer without thinking about what the specific type of cancer that would be. And similarly, we, to make progress in research in the different dementias, we need to know whether an individual has Alzheimer's disease, whether they have frontotemporal dementia, whether they have some other problem. Because only then can we understand these diseases, can we work out what's causing them, and most importantly, can we trial treatments which have the best chance of working. It's very unlikely that we're going to find a treatment that would cure all of dementia. It would be like finding a, a, a tablet or a lotion or potion that cured all skin problems. It's just not possible. We're going to, I think, need treatments that are very specific, very targeted on certain pathologies. We'll need to know what's wrong with somebody.